Hi, it's your friendly neighborhood ex-Muslim Abdullah Samir. I get asked this question all the time. So what about your life after leaving Islam? Did you found your freedom of life? Or your mind still in the cage and thinking about religion and Islam? I get asked this question all the time. Why do you talk about Islam? Now I want to ask Muslims, why do you care? Why does it bother you? If this is my life, I can do what I want with it. If I enjoy talking about Islam, well, whether I enjoy talking about comic books, whether I enjoy talking about Bitcoin, or I like talking about Islam, why does it bother you? Shouldn't you be doing some dhikr or something? Shouldn't you be going and spending your time doing more good deeds? Why are you on Facebook? Why are you on Twitter? Why do you care? Why do you come on my posts, which is my platform, and tell me what to do and what not to do? You see, this is a problem with people, some people, who want to be religious. If you don't want to eat ice cream, don't eat ice cream. Don't go telling other people, you don't eat ice cream, you don't eat ice cream. If your religion says you shouldn't do this and that, don't do it. That's up to you. It doesn't mean you have the right to tell other people what your religion expects of them. Now, you can tell me whatever you want. My blog, my platforms are open for most people. If you're respectful and you want to have a conversation, you can come and have a conversation. You can say dumb things like this. It's not the end of the world. Go ahead. Go ahead and tell me why you're still talking about Islam. Your life's still in a cage. If you found your freedom after being murtad in brackets ex-Muslim, you will never talk about religion. But you're still stuck in there, don't you? Allah Almighty. Hmm. I'm still stuck? I'm not stuck. I choose to do what I want with my time. I choose to talk about the things that I care about. I choose to discuss issues that are relevant either to me, to my family, to my friends, or to the the Muslim Ummah, or to the world. Each of us needs to do this. Each of us should do this. To talk about things that are important. Global issues, local issues, bad ideas. The world will only become a better place if we counter bad ideas with good ones. And sometimes it's okay to be rude, but usually it isn't. You shouldn't escalate to personal attacks. You shouldn't escalate to threats, bullying, Discuss ideas. If someone posts something dumb, tell them why that idea is dumb. Don't attack them individually and say, you're an idiot, you're stupid. Now, recently, Abdullah Gondal and myself have got a lot of personal attacks. I feel like we've reached some sort of level now where, you know, Ali Dawa has gone from telling me he didn't want to talk to me because, you know, I didn't have enough subscribers to like tweeting about me now. Like this is this is what this is how the the level has this is how the playing field has changed. Things are now totally different than you know when I started five years ago. Five years ago, you know Ali Dawa was on Twitter bashing ex-Muslims. You know, making his videos where he picks on ex-Muslims, usually women, and says, "Oh look, look how dumb they are, and look how stupid they are." So then when he was on Twitter saying, oh, you're all fake ex-Muslims, meaning you were never Muslim to begin with, he wasn't expecting it when I came on there. I'm like, okay, what do you mean I'm a fake ex-Muslim? He couldn't call me a fake ex-Muslim, could he? He couldn't use that, oh, you were born a smiley thing either because apparently he converted as well from one sect to another, if I'm correct. My information, I was told, was correct from some Shia, Alavi, or some other sect. He converted to Sunni, right? So he had to resort to blocking me. He couldn't take the heat, you know? So that's fine. I mean, he can block me if he wants to. Like, it's, it's his choice. It's his prerogative. But the point is that things have changed so much. Things have changed now where now, you know, they're talking about us. And, you know, people are actually leaving Islam in droves, right? It's like the surah in the Quran that says, Ida ja nasrullahi wal fat, right? When the, when the victory comes, when you see people embracing the religion in droves, well, now we're seeing people leave the religion in droves, right? We have the atheist Quran that says, when you see the people leaving Islam in droves, 
then thank, what do you thank? The universe? Thank the ex-Muslims? Thank the ex-Muslims of North America? Thank the activists on the ground? Yeah, you can thank all of us. You're not going to thank Allah, a non-existent being who doesn't, doesn't exist, right? So yeah, you know what? The other thing is that we do have lives. We do have balanced lives. We do have other things going on for us, right? You do find that when people leave Islam, they become very emotional and be, can, be, can become very active online. Sometimes they will um, be aggressive, very aggressive, very angry. Sometimes they will do things like eat a bacon sandwich or drink alcohol. You know, things that they've never ever done before just to, you know, sort of, or sometimes they even want to do crazy things like burning the Quran or something like that. Personally, you know, this is, I think, obviously doing these things in public, like, for example, burning Qurans is not not a good decision, not a wise idea. But I do think that if you if you feel the need to sort of, you know, rebel and, you know, feel the need to make up for, you know, what you've lost, that's okay. Usually that feeling goes away and then people just calm down and you just go living your normal life. But in the in the beginning, you might want you might feel this urge to become very active and do all of these things, you know. That's okay. Normally, once that phase ends, you know, people go on and live their lives. Like for example, I I'm in a group called Agnostic Muslims and Friends. I found that a lot of people joined the group and they needed some sort of support and questioning. And then after some point, you know, they'll leave or they're not really active anymore because they got they got the help they needed and now they they're moving on. And then there's others of us, the ones that will continue to talk about these things, excuse me, probably for the rest of their lives because we're activists, or at least until we don't need to anymore. And I don't know if that's going to happen in my life, that, that not needing to, right? Until secular freedom is guaranteed for everybody, freedom of religion, freedom of belief and disbelief, until someone can just say, yeah, I'm not Muslim and nothing will happen to them. Like, we're going to have to keep talking about this. And even then, I do think that we do need to continue talking about this because Islam can be always revived. It can, it can be revitalized. It can come back, right? These things go in waves, right? And so like in my community, there was um, a Muslim lady called Fahad Hashmi, a Salafi, who convinced a whole bunch of women to wear niqab. And now that's like, you know, we're talking about in Canada. Like I think it was in, the, this masjid was in Toronto, in the Toronto area. And a whole bunch of women who went there, it was a women's school, they all went, they all started wearing niqab in Canada in the 21st century. Like, what was the point of that? Like, it's so silly. It's so unnecessary. And it creates a barrier between them and the rest of society. So that's Islamic revivalism. I converted to from a liberal Shia sect to an orthodox, strict Sunni sect. So it happens. It happens in our lives. It happens in the 21st century. We can't just take it for granted. We have to continue to counter these bad ideas. And on top of it, the religious uh, motivation is always there to do dawa, you know, to get the word in the next life. So there's there's big organizations that are well funded by the Muslim community, Ayira, Yakin Institute, and others, and they pay big money. When I write an article on Medium, for example, um, you know, Muhammad's false prophecies, for example, you know, why I don't believe in jinns and possession and all that. You know, I can spend a week, you know, divorce in Islam. I spent, I think, a week or two weeks writing that. Not not full time, but like in the evenings and at night and on my breaks whenever I had time from work. I spent a good chunk of time on that. And I posted it online for free, right? Because I I thought it was important and I wanted to do this. The same, the same person who believes that, you know, the opposite view I have and is working for an organization like Aida or Yakin can get paid $500, $1,000, maybe even more than that for writing an article. That that time converts into money and they don't need to worry about making money during the time that they're writing this. This can, this can be their livelihood. So because of this, of this well-funded Dawa machine, we're going to have to continue talking about these things. This is why I will continue talking about these things, whether or not I get any money out of it. Now, if you want to support me, I do appreciate it. You know, the options down there, you can join the channel, become a, you can become a member of the channel, you can support me on Patreon. The money helps. It does. If I ever get the opportunity to do this full time, I will. Until then, I will do it in my spare time because it's important to me. And those of us who, who care about this world, we will talk about things that matter. 
Why don't you talk about Christianity? Well, I don't know Christianity that well. We do cover, you know, there's overlap. And when, when there is overlap, we talk about it. I've interviewed a bunch of ex-Muslims. And, you know, I've also interviewed a bunch of ex-Christians on my channel. Right? For example, recently, uh, a lawyer, a lady that was atheist in, in the deep south in Tennessee, and how it affected her life. And her story was like any story you would hear from an ex-Muslim. Like the things she went through, losing her husband, right? The, the community ostracizing her, you know, being shunned. It's the same thing, you know, that people go through. I mean, not everyone goes through that level of, you know, obviously everybody has a different experience. But the point is that there are shared common experiences that ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, ex-Mormons, ex-Christians, even ex-Hindus. So we do, and I do specifically talk about other religions as well, but it's not my expertise and it's not my focus. My focus is Islam because that's what I know. That's what I lived. That's what I experienced. And so I'm going to continue talking about it, whether you like it or not, fellow Muslims, fellow people of humanity. If you're going to tell me to stop talking about religion, tell your preachers, your mullahs to stop talking about it. But frankly, I don't care if they talk about it. I just don't want your views to be pushed on me. You know what I mean? Under secularism, I have the right to my views. You have the right to your views. You want to pray? Go ahead. You want to fast? Go ahead. I think it's a problem because I think that it's spiritual compulsion to tell people they're going to burn in hell if they don't wear the hijab. If they don't pray five times a day, if they don't fast, if you take that away and people still want to fast, by all means, marhaban, you're welcome, go ahead. If you still want to pray, go ahead. If you want to meditate, go ahead. None of these things is a problem. You want to dress up as Sailor Moon, go ahead. You want to wear a hijab, go ahead. But if you have a spiritual compulsion behind it, if you're telling people if they don't do this, they're going to go to hell, now that's bad. That's where the problem comes. And so this is where I'm going to push back and I'm going to fight against dogma. I'm going to fight back against bad ideas because it makes the world a worse place. That's my opinion. That's why I talk about these things. Anyways, that's all I wanted to say. This was totally unscripted. Uh, I have no notes in front of me. I just wanted to give my thoughts. And uh, there you have it. This is why we continue talking about Islam. Thanks for watching your friendly neighborhood ex-Muslim. If you want to support me, details are below. You don't have to, but I would appreciate it. If you if you got something out of the channel, if I am, I am the voice for you and you're not, you're not able to have a voice because you can't be open about this, you're most welcome to donate. Thank you so much. This is Abdullah Samir signing out.